As with your molding machines, your tooling should also have a preventive maintenance schedules and maintenance logbooks. By scheduling maintenance for vents, lubrication, inspection, polishing, and descaling the water cooling areas such as the water lines, routine cleaning and inspection of cooling components such as bubblers and twisted baffles can help reduce the number of unplanned and unscheduled process interruptions. When considering quality, good injection molders use quality boards, post quality metrics, and have an ongoing training program. A quality board is a great resource for posting samples of acceptable and unacceptable parts, quality specification, and product documentation. Such a station makes part and product quality visible to everyone from operator to technician. If you're molding very large parts, have a picture book available that will identify the problem areas. Keep in mind, the more educated and knowledgeable everyone is, the more competent, reliable, and effective they will be. This also leads us into a discussion on metrics. You should always make all your employees understand your company's metrics. Everyone at the plant should understand and appreciate the real costs of scrap, equipment, repairs, and production. Employees seldom realize the equipment they are running may cost more than their house, nor do they realize the monetary losses they accumulate on a daily, weekly, and monthly basis. Without such an appreciation, it's virtually impossible for them to understand why continuous improvement is so important. Ongoing employee training is critical to the success of your company, including yours. All of your employees need some level of training. You should consider at least one hour a month of training for your entry level employees and a few hours of training a week for more advanced employees. We have found that every employee wants to do a good job. It is your job to help ensure that they have the skills and knowledge development tools to do their job well. Since different people learn differently, you should use a variety of training sources to get your employees and workforce up to speed. A blended approach to employee training ensures the employees learn and help ensure that everyone gets involved. Companies that train treat their employees like the plastics professionals that they are. These employees will respond to the company by performing their jobs like professionals. When considering the materials within your facility, you should look at how material is delivered to each machine, incoming material inspection, the flow of materials around the plant, and services being provided to the machine. In any production facility, the sources of contamination are virtually endless. Contamination not only affects the material and product, but also affects the equipment. Such particles can clog filters, gum up lubricants, and increase the overall dirtiness of the workplace. For this reason, you should protect your plastics with vacuum lines or covered containers. All of your plant's incoming materials should be thoroughly inspected. Visually check the material for contamination and test the properties of the material. I recommend that you consider purchasing a simple rheometer if possible to perform tests on the properties of your materials. This is very important if you're running engineering or specialty materials. If that's not possible, you should get a melt flow index to perform minimal tests on your materials. When examining the efficiency of your molding facility, closely review the flow of materials. Always lower the number of steps in the process of getting these materials from the warehouse to the machine. When possible, reduce the distance the raw material and finished product have to travel. This will help eliminate bottlenecks and optimize the time management for material handlers. Although the circular plant layout is extremely effective, 
most companies can fit a horseshoe type plant layout into their existing uh, facility. Ultimately, reorganizing the layout or flow of materials within the plant can save thousands of hours of employee time over the course of a year, resulting in improved plant-wide efficiency. Lastly, the services provided to the machine should be placed either below the floor, on the floor, or along the walls. Placing any services on the ceiling introduces many complications over time, including leaks, contamination, and dust accumulation. Furthermore, the ceiling is very hard to reach for cleaning, repairs, and maintenance. When considering the overall facility, there are many cost-saving options available. In most likelihood, your facility can save money by placing attention to these basic aspects. Proper housekeeping, pressurized air distribution, vacuum systems, and water supply. Poor housekeeping introduces contamination, increases complication, and reduces morale. In realities, employees in a dirty workplace are complacent about material handling, appearance, quality, and overall safety. In all of my years, I've never visited a workplace that had a good morale, yet poor housekeeping. All of this messiness causes time delays, contamination, frustration, and serious safety risks. Believe it or not, your air supply system could be costing you hundreds of thousands of dollars a month in wasted energy. A high amount of energy is often used to maintain unnecessarily high line pressure. High powered compressors are now available with secondary or variable speed pumps which maintain consistent line pressure and they use a lot less energy. If you upgrade your equipment and eliminate leaks in the system you can often get a payback in a matter of months for such uh, a simple upgrade. You may want to have your vacuum system eva evaluated to ensure that, you know, that you're using the appropriate amount of vacuum and do not have any leaks. There are many facilities experts that can, with specialized uh, sensing equipment, that can identify energy loss and leaks in both your air supply and vacuum systems. As with air and vacuum, and vacuum, water leaks can also cause significant energy losses. Surprisingly, an unbalanced water flow to your machines can also cause inefficiencies. You should also consider the supply temperature of your plant-wide water system. In many companies, the supply temperature can be 10 to 20 degrees lower than necessary. If you're running machines with very different temperature molds, you may consider using localized temperature controls at each machine rather than drop the overall system temperature. For more information regarding an energy audit, please feel to send me an email or contact me at the phone number listed below.